What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a game called Phoenix Hope. This is a game where it is the end times in a fantasy medieval world. There are demons flooding in, kind of Hellgate London style, to annihilate humanity. And you are, as far as you know, the last surviving human settlement. And you've got to hold out for as long as humanly possible. Along the way, you'll be waiting for the Phoenix to re-arise, which is an elder god that will basically liberate the world from the demons. At least that was the general feeling that I got from the whole thing. And so I don't know if this is endless or if there's actually going to be a hard cap on how long you defend, but I was really impressed by the artistic style of the game. This is one of those games that came out of nowhere. It's the developer's first game on Steam. And thus far from what I've played, they've done a pretty good job with it, especially in the visual sense. The game is almost kind of like an upgraded Life is Hard. So anyways, let's go ahead and dive on in. We'll start a game. I'm going to delete one right here. After watching this, you wanted to get the game for yourself. It's not available just yet. But I will have a link for you down below so that you can wishlist it and help the devs out that way. You'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream just in case you wanted to catch me live or give me any of your thoughts about any of the games or ask any questions about any of the games that I've been playing lately. You're more than welcome to do so on that medium. Uh, we will go with, I don't need the tutorial, I know what I'm doing. Don't need easy mode, I don't think, but this game is quite difficult, so keep that in mind. Uh, it's also a beta, so this game is not completed yet. Uh, it's in its point one iteration right now with the copy that the developer sent over through the Steam Curator program. And so anyways, it's not done yet. This is still a work in progress. Let's go ahead and start it off. The kingdom is ravaged by war. Countless cities of a once prosperous country have been destroyed by ruthless armies of an ancient god. The survivors like sheep without a shepherd scattered across the devastated lands. For three days now I've been wandering without purpose and I think I see a demon ahead. If this is my death, this is not the way I would like to go. I hope to witness the rebirth of humanity. I want to see the phoenix. Stabbed him in the back right there. That's not very honorable warrior, but it is conniving and I respect it. Thank you. You saved us. Please join us. We'll be safer together. Very well, friends, but the demons will come here. Let's get ready for tonight. We found a couple of axes and pickaxes near the abandoned mine nearby. Oh, we're not imagining things. There really are people here. Come on, let us join you. Cool, so we've got our starting retinue. Now this game doesn't have push pause. Now one of the effects of that is that I've gotten very used to playing strategy games that have a push pause. So I may get a little bit flustered and I may make some misplays here. I'm just apologizing in advance for that. I don't have the mechanical crutch that I normally have in order to make myself successful in games like this. It may also make explanation and talking about things difficult because I've got to focus on getting things set up so that we don't get annihilated outright. And so there's kind of a pace and a stride that I'm going to need to hit at the outset of this game. Otherwise, we're going to get got. But for right now, I can talk about the UI. So at the top right here, we've got our food. That goes down every single day in accordance with how many people you have. You've got wood, building material, obviously. Stone, building material. We've got ourselves some, uh, this is iron or like metal right here. We use that for making tools and weapons. This is our pop right here. We've got four guys and we can have a maximum of six with our current camp size. Uh, right here, we've got our tools. Those are basically the currency that you use in order to purchase workers at any workstation. And then we've got weapons, which are the currency that you use to purchase warriors at any barracks or archery range or anything else like that. I don't know what the rightmost thing is. I haven't gotten there yet, but I, maybe we will today. Down on the bottom right here, this is where you make new retinues, new armies. So every army basically has like a signifer. If you're familiar with, if you're familiar with like Romans, uh, basically there's a standard. You put a standard down, and then you assign your army to that standard. And then rather than going with an RTS flare where you click on individual units and try to get them in the right spot, you'll just take the flag and you drag it to where you want it to go, and that's where the army will station up, which most typically is behind your walls. Uh, this is our building menu right here, and I haven't had anything pop up on this bottom row right here with the arrows yet, but maybe someday. For right now, the first thing we need to get up and running is going to be a wood chopper's shack. If we don't have a wood chopper's shack, we're going to have a bad time. One of the core mechanics of the game is this bubble right here. The enemy cannot spawn inside this bubble. Uh, so that's a good thing to keep in mind is that, like, nobody can spawn inside of here. So don't extend your walls too far outside the bubble. Otherwise, the enemy may damn well just spawn inside of it, run straight over here, and annihilate and pillage your village. 
And, you know, even though it rhymes, which seems like it would add a certain amount of levity to that situation, having my village pillaged is not one of those things that I want to have. Uh, we only have one hammerer right now. We could hire another worker. It cost us five stone and five wood. I don't know if I want to do that just yet. I may, may, I may just wait for the wood chopper to get done. I'm going to put down a wall right there right along the edge of the bubble because that seems to be the smartest way to do it and we'll put another wall over there we are going to start eating through our wood supply pretty quickly and in fact i don't think our economy is going to be fully up and running for at least a day or two but if we can get the walls taken care of and we can get the wood chopper locked down for right now i feel very strongly that that's a good idea i'm going to go ahead and i don't know if i want to spend a second tool on another wood chopper i don't know if we need it it may be unnecessary uh, one thing the game does do is it doesn't subtract the building materials the second that you place the building. The building materials are actually hammered in one strike at a time. So don't get ahead of yourself and overexpand. You may run into issues if you do that. Uh, I The first time I played, I ran out of resources constantly because like I was just kind of clicking stuff out. And I was like, yeah, I've got wood, dude. And, uh, no, you don't. Uh, you, you don't have wood. Your wood just hasn't been allocated yet. Uh, you can see our wood chopper is now getting us wood. Every time he chops a tree, we get one wood. That's really, really good. We kind of got to decide if we want a worker or if we want another wood chopper as of right now. If we get another worker, it'll allow us to build buildings faster. If we get another wood chopper, we will be swimming in wood before too long. And we are going to need a lot in order to get things done. I think I'm going to go with a worker for right now. It just feels like a stronger choice, and then that worker is going to be responsible uh, for building up the camp right here. If we can get the camp built up, we can actually have 30 people inside of our village, and the bubble should get much, much larger, because I think it's kind of like generated by the hopes and dreams of all of the people that live inside the village. I don't know exactly if that's the case, but that's kind of how I envision it in my head. I'm going to attach a banner over here, and I'm going to attach a banner over here. You get hit on the first night from the left harder than you get hit from the right. So I'm going to put a swordsman and a spearman on that wall right there. And then I'm going to put a spearman on that wall as well. Uh, we do have other defenses that we can play around with in order to make ourselves a little bit safer. And I would recommend we deploy a few of those. Uh, these spikes right here, the enemy walks across them. And when they walk across the spikes, they take a bunch of damage. The downside is them walking across the spikes erodes the spikes. And so we got to constantly rebuild them. And unfortunately, as of right now, there is no auto rebuild option uh, for the defenses for when they get destroyed. I would like to see something like that added to the game. So if you just click on these, like a little checkbox that says auto rebuild, you know, if they could just make this a little bit taller, maybe they'd have another column or another row that they can put that inside of. There's our four spikes down on that side. We'll see if it helps out with the defense in any meaningful way. I don't know is our wood chopper. He's going out to that tree over there. So as you can see, our pop cap has been increased to 30 and our bubble has not grown yet, but our bubble will get more bigger with time. Uh, we have a little bit of time left, so help this guy out by putting a couple more spikes on that side. We have enough to build four. I don't know if they'll get all four done before the nightfall. Everybody kind of comes back in here for a siesta at night, as was typical of human beings today and back then. Although in medieval times, people slept differently than they do now. A lot of people don't know that. People slept biphasically in medieval times. It's referenced many, many times in old writings uh, back in kind of the knights in armor days about your first and second sleep was a thing that they reference all the time in old writing. Uh, that's because people would sleep from like 6 o'clock when it got dark to about midnight, and then they would get up, and they would be awake for 3 or 4 hours, and then they would sleep from 4 until 6 or 7, when the sun came up. It was actually one of those interesting little factoids about antiquity is that human beings back then slept uh, biphasically. And in fact, some scientific studies show that that's actually far healthier and more in line with like our evolutionary history and how we should sleep. Uh, but anyways, I digress. I don't want to get off on a tangent here. The first night is a upon us. Upon us. I used the wrong vowel right there and I apologize. I've embarrassed myself once again on the internet. What we should see is that portals should start opening up, and once the portals open up, that's when we are going to see demons flood into this realm. The right wall should be decently safe, I would think. The left wall, I played two or three playthroughs before I did this, so the left wall should get hit harder than the right wall on the first night from all of my experience. However, I don't see it popping open yet. Oh, there it is. It spawned way back, actually. Interesting. 
Last time I took a risk the last time I played the game and I built my walls like right here outside the bubble and they were like zoop and they opened their portal literally like right outside my bubble and just walked in and annihilated me. It was upsetting. I hated it. I hated every moment of it. I was like, well, you have made me feel foolish and I am now. Oh, there's one that's a little bit closer right there. It uh, looks like the spikes are killing off the demons before they even get here. You love to see it. Unfortunately, this is a very costly strategy with regards to raw inputs and outputs. And they've already destroyed two of them, so that's a little bit of a bummer. But, you know, maybe it'll be okay. As you can see, our Spearman's fighting right there. We've got a very inconvenient sort of wooden bush in the way so that we can't view the conflict as of right now. Oh, good, the portal closed. Very nice. Uh, one thing that they will do is they will auto-repair walls as the walls take damage. I don't know if the developers are just against health bars, but I would recommend adding health bars to the game. Uh, not having health bars sort of limits strategy, and I'll tell you why. Sometimes what you want is for your units to go out and sally forth and fight for a little bit, then fall back behind the spike walls and the defenses and the archers, and there's no real way to like tell how much HP anything has in this game, from the walls to the soldiers to like everything else, and having kind of access to that information would be very, very helpful. This first night is actually a lot quieter than most of the other first nights that I've played. I don't want to, like, put the old jinx on it, but it definitely feels a little bit calmer. I'm going to have them rebuild the mine during the night while we wait, hopefully. Uh, he's coming over here to fix the wall. But if we can get a little bit ahead of the curve by building up the mine real fast, uh, we can start getting more access to stone. Right now, all of our stone is coming uh, from just our basic... So these guys right here, your, your stronghold... It generates resources all by its lonesome with no input whatsoever. The other buildings are all kind of like supplementary when it comes to helping you out. It's going to take like 50 wood to get this built, and so it is going to be a very, very expensive gamble in order to make that happen. Oh, we're on day two. Very nice. And so food has been deducted from our granary, and we are ready to rock with our second day. You love to see it. Good. Uh, if I can get my, yeah, I was going to say, I need you to go back out and start, like, doing things. Because he's put most of our wood stocks into upgrading this mine right here, unfortunately. And so if we don't start having a slow trickle of just more goodies coming, I am going to assign another wood chopper, I think. You don't get the tool back, by the way? There's a new goal. What's my new goal? Ah, our new goal is to explore the mine. Gotcha. So what we can do for right now is we can start ordering miners to excavate things. I'm going to add a miner over here. I don't think we need, like, a ton of them. But just having, like, one guy whittling away at the stone down there and making sure that we have a little bit of extra resources coming in would be a really, really good idea. As far as workers go, I don't think we need to hire more workers. We only have two idle guys for right now. Our bubble has not gotten that much bigger, and that is a fact that is beginning to worry me because I need the bubble to get a little bit bigger so I can build a farm and we can start having food coming in so that we don't start starving. So, I'm not agitated about it, but I am a little concerned about it. I don't know if this is just going to give us a batch of resources when it's done or if it's going to actively give us resources as we hit it. Uh, but let's not have idle people sitting around doing nothing. Let's go ahead and repair some of these spikes over here. And then we'll repair these spikes over here. That's going to be 32 wood gone. So that is going to be an expensive expenditure. But we've got wood. Like our, our wood inputs right now are quite good. It looks like we have two more people that are joining the village. We'll wait and see if that affects how big the bubble gets right there. I would recommend that they make the bubble maybe a little bit more goldish color. So it stands out against the background during the day. Or give it like a, a vague sparkle or something that happens just along kind of like the shiny bits that you can see right there. I don't know. Uh, build orders are also unreliable. That's another thing that I will add to this experience is that they don't build stuff like in the order that you put it out there. They seem to just kind of build things up randomly, which can lead to a lot of lost time. So I would highly recommend, just me personally, uh, that you take that loss of time into account whenever you queue up a lot of jobs. Uh, so, like, by the order that we did this, they should have fixed all these first, then they should have fixed all these second. I would recommend that they, they make it iterative, effectively, so that, like, the order that you give commands are the order that they're carried out in, and maybe even a little number over the top of each one so that you can keep track of it in just a visual sense. 
Oh, we got two more villagers in here. Bubble ain't grown no larger. What's the next upgrade going to cost me? We don't actually know right now. We don't actually know. As far oh, I can fit a farm right there. Very nice. Okay, get a farm right inside the wall then. That'll fix our food problem. That's, that's pretty much my main concern right now is we only have like a day's worth of food left. So let's get on top of it and make it happen, Captain. For right now, we don't have a lot of resources left. I don't know if there's a cap on how much of this stuff you can store either. No clue on that one. I could hire some more workers. That definitely seems like an option. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Let's get a few more workers right there. That sounds great. So we have 10 people employed right now. We have two people left who are unemployed. That was a little bit expensive to grab two more of them, but it's not like we're hurting for resources right now. So I don't see a problem with it. The next thing that I would like to build is a tool shop, I think. Yeah, smithy. So a place where blacksmiths can create tools and weapons for your people. And once we get a few more stone, we'll be able to hammer that on into play. This guy right here is going to use up the vast majority of our stone. Oh, we got five ore. Very nice. I do wish I knew how close this was to being destroyed. Oh, did I take the tag off? I was trying to click on it to see if maybe it had HP or something like that. Nope, cancel that. Go back to the one you were already working on. There we go. I'm proud of you. Nope, stop doing what you're doing. Go back to that one. Go back to that one. Please. Please, me lord. I'm very confused by your orders. First you say dig left, then you say dig right. I can't work under these conditions, me lord. Well, either way, I, I need you to just work in general. So if you could take care of that for me, it would be magnificent. Okay. I don't know if we need a house soon. It's a home for your citizen, and it increases the available number of rooms, which I would guess is probably that second number right there. It more than likely just increases our pop cap. The farmers cost one tool, which we have... Oh, we need two workers to make one farmer. But I have two workers, don't I? No, I have one out of two, ten, ten, but it says I don't have a tool. Oh, the tools are... N oh, okay, the tools are non-specific. I'm sorry, the tools are specific. Gotcha. Okay, well, let's get the forge up then. We gotta get some farmers rocking. We don't have a choice. Looks like the miner is done with his job for the day. That's okay by me. You can take a little break. We're going to use up most of our stone on this guy, though. So if we could get a wall down pretty soon, just down here in the mine and just see the benefits of that, it would be great. However, it took him, like, all day to do that. Since I have extra pickaxes, I am going to assign another miner since I can't really do anything else anyways. It doesn't look like hammers are listed inside of here. So by my reckoning, I'm thinking we should be able to just assign a guy to do this. But another wave is upon us. Looks like we've mostly just got little guys trickling through for right now. But we 100% have to get the farm done tomorrow. If we don't get the farm done tomorrow, we have sizable issues that we're going to have to grapple and wrestle with uh, with, no, with no oil. With no oil, no grease, uh, sandpaper shirts, you know, as, as unpleasant as wrestling can be. A little bit thicker of an assault tonight. Little bit more beefy of an assault. It's not completely more beefy, but it is beefy. Uh, your spearmen do not have any cleave when they hit these enemies when they're piled up. They just got to knock them down one by one. And so anyways, oh, you can get a vague damage synopsis. So I guess it says no damage, slightly damage, very damage, so on and so forth. And with guys like actively repairing it from behind, hey, we survived another day. We won't survive another day, though, if we don't get like some serious serious goodies going oh can they only work on one wall at a time is that what it is oh are they gonna mine that stone right there yeah do that we need stone really badly so if you guys could pick up some of that extra stone so that we could finish off the smithy i'd appreciate it uh, we need 10 stone to hire a smithy right here all right so i would like can i tell him what to produce i need scythes more than anything else so if you can make a scythe for me, you will be an absolute champion. I do think that they could bump up the starting food a little bit to like 40 just to give you a couple days leeway. Right now, I do think that the pacing and the timing of the game is a little bit tight. And uh, 
it's not so tight that like you feel completely and totally oppressed but I do think that like the first three to five days should probably be like a gimme just to let people get their bearings so long as they figure out how to put guys on the walls the first three to five days should more or less be covered uh, you're gonna be a blacksmith soon right please for the love of God make me that scythe I don't know how long it's gonna take him to do that uh, like all day is how long it's gonna take him to do that from what I can tell very very unfortunate our scythe is very nearly done at midday. Hopefully that's enough time to get 12 food together. I don't know. We'll find out. I somehow doubt it, but maybe it'll work out. Maybe everything will be okay. The downside to all this is that unfortunately, I need a worker back so that I can assign them to go work over here. And he's got training time. This little meter has to fill up right here with this little guy that's going to be a farmer. So it's possible he may not get a whole lot of work done just today in general. But our wood supply looks good, so I feel reasonably safe in taking people off of certain jobs. I'm going to get another scythe going, and then from there I think I'm going to get... Oh, I don't know. Maybe a spear? That sounds good. We don't really have a place right now. We don't really have a place for a spearman right now. Hey, there he goes. Hopefully he goes out here and he just harvests food the exact same way like one swing gives you one food. I don't think it works that way. I think he's actually got to till the field. Oh, no, dude. Oh, well, he did get a little bit of food right there. I mean, one less person is going to starve. So sometimes you just got to take the... Oh, I think we're actually this arrow right here. So we're actually like in the evening right now. Unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Not crazy happy with our outputs today. Hopefully we get a little bit more leeway and everybody doesn't just like spontaneously die if they don't have enough food. Or even better, if he works through the night, I think we're golden. If he does not work through the night, we got problems. Everybody else does not work through the night. And so like, we'll see. But yeah, I do think that the, the food in this build is a little bit low at the beginning of the game. I think if they started you with 40 instead of 20, uh, you would have a little bit more. It's like I could get this up in time if I had 30 or 40 food instead because we'd still have one day's worth of food left. You got 10 done. Bummer. Okay, well, we're probably going to lose two citizens at the end of the day. It looks like the blacksmith is just going to keep everybody up late into the night just being annoying and banging on his anvil. Good for you, man. The miners didn't get the two walls done down there, but that's okay. You can only assign one miner to a wall at a time, and then you uncover the resources that are inside of there. But for the moment, I feel like we do have very much... Oh, it's good that the blacksmith works through the night, though. So we found at least one job that continues to do what he's supposed to do, even though the eve is upon him. So we've got one scythe ready to go. I'll probably assign a second farmer over here. It feels like the smart play. We'll see what the four guys are that die. If the four guys that die from not having enough food include our farmers, we're in deep trouble. But if it gets like, you know, one or two of our workers and like our lumberjack, like, eh, we're stocked up on that front. So I mostly feel like we'll be okay. How bad is Ray going to be? Doesn't look too bad so far. But then again, it surprised me in the past. Right side's looking reasonably safe too. I'll let you know if anything out of the ordinary happens. You know, honestly, even though the waves are getting a little bit more fortified, like the fact that you can just have a worker sit behind here and fix the wall like as they damage it, it really does extend the longevity of your survivability behind your walls pretty considerably. So, like, I don't think they're going to get through. We've got enough workers scrambling and running around. Did anybody die? Oh, nobody dies. Okay, curious. Well, that's fine by me then. I took the time over the night to build the Soul Collector over here. It should pick up the demonic essence that they leave behind so that we can do research, uh, which I think may be making the bubble bigger. Actually, no, the bubble has moved. It's moved out by one space. Yeah, I think the bubble is actually linked to your population size, maybe. Okay, sounds good. Uh, get all the spikes repaired. Get those ready to rock because they take the edge off very, very nicely. We only have the one guy chopping right now. 
Did you guys finish off the walls down here? Oh, very nice. So we've got an ore vein right there. We've got stone coming in. Hell yeah. Let's queue up some more goodies over here. We'll get a sword and board. And I'm going to queue up like one of each of those, basically. I just want him to be working like all the time so that I can fill out all of my job rosters. Uh, this right here is very, very expensive. We need 10 food in order to make this work. But I do want to see how the research functions before we finish off the episode. And so there may be some jump cuts and like some edits just to get us there with regards to like the time constraints that YouTube implements. But I would like to see how the soul collecting functions and like how the research tree works. Unfortunately, I have no building space. There's more stuff that I have the resources to build. But alas, I don't really have uh, much else to play with right there. I don't know if the archery tower can actually be targeted by enemies. It's a thing that I'm curious about, but like I would have to have archers and stuff, I guess, first before I could really do anything. I don't think you can build underground either, but they've cleared out everything that they had rocking down here, which is great. He's completed one of his orders, so he's knocking out like one of everything, basically. I'll probably tell him to knock out a few more spears, too. I'd like to get like maybe three spears a wall. And then we could stop repairing the spikes for a little bit because I think three spears would be enough uh, to really hold down the enemy. The swordsman, he's not really that useful during the sieges. I mean, he's useful if the wall goes down at holding back the enemy, but like, as of right now, not that useful. Some of the renovations I made during the cut right there is I added another blacksmith, I added the soul collector, and so we should be in solid shape right now, I think, to make things happen. Does the Soul Collector actually have to, like, sprint over here and grab the soul? Or, like, how does that work? The soul is right there. But I don't think I can assign them to the rally flag. So I'm sort of curious about the way in which they collect the... Maybe it's not implemented yet, because we can't build the scientist lab, which says that that's for all the upgrades and whatnot. So maybe it's not even in yet. I don't know. They don't seem to be doing anything right now. They're just kind of, like, hanging out over there. Maybe they do it once the wave is officially over. I don't know. The souls seem to be dissipating. Yeah, there's no option to assign them to a wall or anything either, so, like... Hmm. Maybe they just don't do anything. I don't know. Uh, this is Phoenix Hope. I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I like this game a lot. I think they've made some very, very solid, very intelligent decisions with the visual design of the game. I'm finding the soundtrack to be very enjoyable. We can do everybody's favorite part of the video and look at the settings right now. Pretty bare bones. Uh, looks like we are limited at the moment. I don't think that that's actually the uh, resolution that we're at here. I can fiddle with it real fast. Yeah, I feel like it's pretty much the same. Uh, for our music split, we've got ourselves master volume, music volume, sound volume, simple stuff, full screen, V-Sync, just in case you've got tearing, and then the scaling factor, which I think is just how zoomed in the game is, basically. Uh, if you want it to be way more zoomed in, you can do that. But those are the options as they exist right now. Bare bones stuff, but hey, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Phoenix Hope. Tomorrow we will very likely have something else. I think this game is showing strong beginnings with regards to just kind of the visual design with some small adjustments like health bars and things on the walls. Uh, I feel like we'd be in business. I feel like we'd be ready to rock. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. I'll have something hot and fresh for you off the indie skillet tomorrow, but for now, it's time for me to go. Bye-bye.